Welcome back, everybody. Watercolor or Tuesday in drawing. And we're going to draw some stuff. And I just thought I would give you a recap of last week. Uh, this is what we did on Thursday. We finished the uh, mermaid. And I think she turned out pretty cool. And there is a traceable for this for all members of all levels on Patreon and my YouTube. And then for the Patreon and YouTube members, the uh, top level, which is the Blooming Artists, we did a discussion about borders. And this is what we ended up with as one of the borders. And this is a start to finish with stencils and collage markers. And that is up already if you want to take a look at that. And yesterday I did a stream with the blooming artist and budding artist. So if you are one of those members, and this is also Patreon on all of these, and you can find the link on the Patreon. And this is the lilac painting. Very easy, simple way of doing lilacs. More impressionistic style. Um, okay. And today we're going to do this. Uh, we did a, a cute little sparrow last week and I did a step-by-step -step on the drawing of it and what you need to um, do. See. I'm going to just check my YouTube to make sure it's looking okay for you guys. Uh, it could be a little brighter. That's a little better. A bit of a leg, so let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. All right. So I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. I know in the States, United States, they had their Memorial Day weekend. At least I think that's what you called it. And we had a very hot. Um, yesterday was very hot. We're in the 30s, low 30s. And too hot to garden, so it was a good time to do the streams. <laughs> so I thought we could do this one. I'm just going to put this aside because it was hot. Let's do something nice and cool that we could drink. So this is uh, lemonade or watermelon iced tea, whatever you want it to be. So it's in one of those um, ceiling jar jugs, cups. Carol, is it like crazy hot where you are? It's hot here. We're up to, I think it's um, 28 right now and it feels like 32. I'm not used to that. I don't like it. So I have just a, a Mechanical pencil. This is a paper mate um, 0.7. If you want to, these are fairly cheap. I get them at the dollar store. Uh, yes, it's super hot. Yeah. 
dogs are lazy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave this page because I'm going to do some more drawing of just uh, graphite on this page of stuff in the kitchen. So this is what I want you to do is just grab something out of the kitchen and draw it. Salt pepper shakers, uh, can opener, forks, knives, pot, dishes, whatever you, you have, and just draw. And it's not about how good it is, it's about just drawing. Get used to finding that special place in time that you can kind of run away to <laughs> in this crazy world and draw so that your mind is thinking nothing more but the drawing. And if you could do that every day, that would be great. But don't make it something that you dread. You want this to become a habit of enjoyment. And so don't criticize yourself. Don't judge what if it's good or bad. Just draw. That's all I want you to do. And this will get your creativity going. It'll improve your skills. And it'll um, boost your um, the way of thinking about your drawing. So we have a nice pool. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, uh, not this big, obviously, but well, I'm looking at shapes. So I kind of have a square here or a rectangle which would be, hmm, let's put it down here. So I'm just going to draw the bottom part of this rectangle. We also have another one on the handle here. And if you look, there's, oh, about a uh, little more than a quarter. I guess it would almost be a quarter from this to this in size wise so let's say there's your half so it'd start about uh, about there i think to there okay so i'm just going to put a line rectangle added to it oh uh, can you guys see this carol is it faded out or can you see it And then also this part here, it's kind of a curved rectangle. And it's, it comes to about here. And it's got a little bit of a height to it. And then it curves and ellipse right in here. Okay, so there's what we have so far. Very rough looking, but that's how we start. Um, let's see. Just seeing if I'm still live. I guess I better. No, not yet. Um, on YouTube. Um, yeah, I guess I can see it. A little bit. There. 
Is that better? Okay, so when I look at this, well, obviously it's thicker and it's curved. So then we can fix what we have. And this inside curves out like this. Okay. And this here, I am going to curve it because we have an ellipse here. So we want that down here. So we're going to bring this out a little bit. And this here, comes down, uh, let's see, like that. Hey Janet, it's boiling hot here, <laughs> so I'm doing some lemonade. <laughs> Crazy, crazy weather. Too hot to be outside. Very humid here. We, that's the thing with our weather in the summer. We get the humidity. And it's crazy. So we have, let's see, one, two rings that kind of stick out a little bit. So, but we have to follow the ellipse shape. And actually that goes up there. Because it's this is a screw tab or screw a screw um, lid for this, so it's screwing upward. So it would be up there, like this, and then it comes down. And this here, it's the same thing. Ellipse. We're 80 with humidity, are you? Yeah, I don't like that humidity. Just knocks you right down. Like that. And the thickness of the glass shows at the side here. It's going to be covered, but you can put a little bit of that in. And this. Like I said, this is just sketching. Do Have fun with it. It's not supposed to be um, photorealistic. It's it's sketchbooking. So just take a look, see if it looks right for you. Let's see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then you can get rid of any marks that you don't want with your eraser. Yeah. Clean this up a bit. Okay. There's a bit of um, thickness of the glass shows down here, but it doesn't go all the way around. 
just, just if you notice here, right in here, see how it just stops. And then we have these cool bits of fruit in here. So the lemon or grapefruit, whatever it may be. Looks like lime in there too. Put that in and a big round one here. And the rind is, it's kind of uneven looking, jaggedy. So just draw that in. Like that. And little sections. Not all of the sections are the same either. Sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big. They're kind of rounded too as they come to the center of that lemon. Oh. 83 here with the heat advisor, yeah. It's been so cool here that 80 feels, yeah, exactly. It's bouncing back from extremes. And that's the problem, eh? Even the flowers, you know, stuff looks wilty and because they're not even used to it yet. <laughs> it's crazy weather. All right, so then we'll put some, um, now this is a piece of watermelon it looks like. So let's put one of those in. So let's see, kind of hides in there. Comes up here, bit of a curve. And then there's some leaves. So we have three leaves, so this must be mint. See the stem of that one? And then there's a stir stick, or you could put a straw. I'm going to put a straw in. So let's remove these lines where the overlap of the jar is so we don't get confused. There we go. So these won't be showing. You could put a umbrella on too if you wanted to. You know those umbrellas that you see on them. And then ice cubes. Okay, we have some ice cubes in here. Over top, kind of. You're seeing them in here too through the glass. Let's put this one in. It's behind the other one. Okay, so that wouldn't be showing anymore. Okay, ice cubes. And then there's I'm not going to put these in because they're kind of blurred out a little bit. They're not as defined. Um, but you can just stick a 
straw in there if you want. It's not quite right. And maybe have a stripe on it. Like that. And we'll just put, I don't know, shadow down here. So we do, now that we have the initial drawing, just take a look at your drawing. Erase stuff that you don't want shown. And then let's take a look at, actually, I just noticed that this handle comes up at the bow of the jar. So it's up here. So and there you go. You have to really pay attention and look at it with artist eyes. Now it's, I, it's hard to see which, how that's going, but I'm going to make it thick. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Jen. Good to see you. Okay. Just find a time to play along or find your own picture. Grab, grab a drink. <laughs> draw what you're drinking. Put some ice in it and draw it. Just get comfortable with drawing or trying different things. That's the main thing of what I want you to succeed in is feeling comfortable with drawing. And eventually finding that uh, mindset that you get when you draw it takes you away in your own little world and relieves you of stress and it's great okay i'm gonna put some dark spots in here um you don't have to put them all in Put a few in. Oh, there's, see this here? That's another rind showing through, but it kind of fades off. Uh, there's not a whole lot, a lot of um, highlight on here, but we will be putting some on. So we'll start off with this. see what we can do. So I have my palette here. Now do you want me to zoom in or would you rather I keep it like this so you can see the picture in my palette? Uh, hi Kathy and all struggling with internet today. Oh darn, darn internet. Isn't that, that's such a pain. Hopefully it straightens out dot. You can always rewatch though. All right, so I got my black velvet brushes here. And let's see. I have two here smaller and a bigger number eight and a number four I have my water I have my paper towels and this is just sketchbook paper I like to hold a paper towel um, that I can just 
I like to dab off my brush if there's too much water. You'll you'll eventually learn that when you do um, watercolor because you don't want pooling water, just enough water so that you can move the paint around. Don't know what the problem is, but the landline are playing up to. Oh, that's weird. Maybe they're doing some work around your area. Or there's storms, maybe? I don't know. Wind? All right, so how do we start this? So, our biggest area, of course, is the pink. And I'm going to probably use... Let's get a piece of paper out so we can test the colors. some plain old copy paper just test colors yeah I bet it's a pain Eesh. so this is a really bright almost magenta so let's see what we can do we have Quinn magenta or let's see it's a little more pinky than I want Uh, let's see what this one is. That's too red. We might have to make our own. Actually, that's not bad. I think that's the uh, coral. Will that add the coral? I think that's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the coral um, Daniel Smith. And we'll add some magenta with it. Yeah, that's a good color. All right. So there's the color. Yep, right on. All right, so we're, we're going to just, I'm going to do a light wash right now. Just something to indicate where everything is. So I know there's a lot of color in here. I'm going to stay away from those lemons and the rinds for now. I know there's a bright light there. Kind of goes in there. Comes up around. We might even use some um, wash to do some of the white areas. It's fairly dark. It's kind of a watermelon color, actually. And then it does come in a little bit in here. And then there's the watermelon. It's fairly dark in here. So I'm just going to tap in that area. And it's fairly dark in here too. So just tapping. This one side is fairly dark. And down here.
So I'm just going to put a little bit here. I know there isn't, um, I've made mine a little bit smaller, but that's okay. A little lighter in here. So less pigment on my brush. It's actually a little bit very, very pale right down here. So I'm just going to hint. <laughs> There's a little bit of a color being cast onto the handle just a bit. And then in the rind here, you don't see the sections on this part. So we'll just put that in. And it's still wet, so I'm just dabbing in basically because it's not a real defined area and then hardly any pigment more or less water and we'll put in this area this has actually got a bit of yellow showing through from the rind. Now I'm going to add more to this so Okay, so there's a bit of a haze of yellow. So I'm going to take my this one, Henza Yellow, and just a, quite a bit of water on my brush, and I'm just going to dab and if it goes into the yellow or the, uh, the pink, that's fine. And then right in here too. can see this is kind of green so I'm going to take some of that leaf green by Da Vinci and just add it to that almost dirty looking um, green so we're gonna add a little bit of the pink to it and that'll um, Calm it down, but still gives you the um, the look of that lemon. <clears throat> All righty, so that I need a little bit more pink up in here. the watermelon and I'm going to make some more of that up. Okay, 
Okay, we have that green, that bright green on the top here. Like a spring green almost. And these are green. And they're a little bit dark um, shadow. So while it's still wet, I'm just going to dab in some dark green in here and let it do its thing. It can bleed wherever it wants. And I'm going to take a little bit on my brush of that dark. I'm just going to dab a little bit in here. It's a little bit wet still. And let's try and remove a little bit of this. I don't want it too defined edged so we'll take some try and take some of this yellow off here just so that it's a little easier when we put um, the other colors on like that. and those ice cubes I'm going to make the slightest pink color Probably just dirty water. <laughs> we'll add uh, highlights on later. Okay, now I'm going to dry that up so I can put another coat on. All right, so let's put another coat of this bright pink, darken it up a little in the areas that are really dark. So I know I can go around these um, wedges of fruit here. Because they were Fairly dark on the bottom. Okay, while that's still wet, I'm going to take my brush and just go along the edges 
and wash it out so it's not so stiff looking. You don't want a hard line. It's fairly almost foggy looking. In here, I'll spot in there and bring this up in here. So I want a fair amount of dark in there, a little bit there. Wet brush. And fix the edges. Soften them up. It's a matter of just going back and forth with your colors and looking at where's the darkest areas that I need to add this to. Clean water again and just back on those edges. A little bit more. really dark in here and here so you just keep building up your darkest darks
Okay. And then I'm going to take some clean water for this rind here. And just going to wet it. And then I'm going to take that green and just go along the edge and let it bleed into that white area. And a little bit more pink in, in parts of this. Actually, I'm going to wet this just around the edge. I don't want to go into the yellow of the rind. And then just dab along the edge. Let it bleed in. Didn't have any water there. Add some. So, this here, mm, let's see, then we want a little bit of a hint of gray. So to make gray, you can use your uh, ultramarine and a little bit of your umber, burnt umber. And that'll give you a gray. You just kind of have to play with how much of what color. So it's just a slight hint of gray. Right in the bottom part here. There's a little bit of different colors, but mostly gray. down here. And right here is gray. All right. The straw. Let's do a yellow and white straw, I think. Take that yellow. Uh, and I'm going to take a little bit of this out, see if I can remove it, this cloth, yep, yeah. and a little bit of the pink just in the center. All right. Um, soften the edge on this one a little bit. Don't want real hard edges. So you just damp brush with clean water. Okay. Now, Let's use some gouache. 
So I have the uh, Winsor Newton designer gouache here. And let's see, do I have a container? Just have one of these pan pastel lids here I'll use. So I don't want to mess up my palette with gouache. And I'll use a different uh, brush. I don't like using my good brushes with gouache. There's one. I'm just mixing a little bit of water on my brush wasn't much and this is fairly bright so I'm gonna leave try and leave a little bit of a yellow edge the thing with gouache is you can't do too many strokes because then you end up stirring up the layer below which is the yellow or pink and it'll come through your gouache real quick so you kind of have to be quick with it okay and then this one had a little bit too The white center. And just a very light, watery application there, just to lighten it up a little bit. Same with this here. I'm going to put water on my brush. I just want kind of watered down right in here. That. And then right in here, there's it's kind of just dabbing. Clean up the edges, let it bleed a little bit. A little bit of fuzzy looking right in here. goes into the this is the shine on the on the um, cup mason jar whatever it is more to find right there. Real bright area right in here. Right here.
And this here, a little more white. Just dab. And there's a few marks. Just down in here. Right there. Light mark on the top of the thing. And then I'm just going to put a line down the center of my straw. <clears throat> and a little bit down on the side here. Not right on the edge, but just over a little bit. Right there. And just pay attention to the, what you're seeing. Uh, let's see. That's a definite line there. Awesome, Carol. You're fun to do. Like I said, don't... Um, Criticize yourself. Don't show it to anybody. It's yours. Just have fun with it. This is your inner kid trying something new. I'm just going to put a little bit dark in there. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow. So a bit of gray right on the top here. So I just put my brush in a little bit of that mix that I did with the umber and the ultramarine because I want to define those um, ice cubes. Don't want them to be Just a blob. So that worked there. And just want to make sure it's not too hard of a line here and there. Let's do a little bit more on here. The 
highlight. white in here. Okay. You know, a little bit more in there. Then you can just fix here and there. If you want a little bit more dark in, as long as you haven't done the white too much, you can fix around your stuff. I need a little bit more dark in there along the side. Just in here. I'm just playing. Soft, always soften the edges when you're doing something that's got um, kind of a misty look to it. All right, let's see. Let's clean up some of these edges. The paper's peeling. There. All right, so let's put uh, some shadow in there so it doesn't look like it's just sitting in 
midair. <laughs> a little bit more of that umber and ultramarine and umber. And then just put in Now it could be, if the sunshine is shining through it, you're going to have a bit of a, it's a shadow, but it's going to have a tinge of the color shining through too. So you can add a little bit of that pink. Like that and it actually have more of a um, deeper pink in just on the bottom here because it's casting through the glass <laughs> Hi, Lori. Yeah, it just comes with practice, Lori. The more you do, the faster you'll get at it. Don't look at it as a time thing. I just want you to have a relaxing time of just drawing and painting to de-stress yourself. Enjoy what you're doing. Don't worry about if it's good or bad or right or wrong. Just enjoy. Okay, let's dry it. What's in the drink? Whatever you want. <laughs> Depends on your day. Could be just iced tea, lemonade, it could be a watermelon iced tea, it could be, I don't know, a little rum in there, <laughs> sangria, what, whatever you want. Okay, so the only other thing I would want to do is put the lines of the uh, lemon in, and they're white. They're not exactly white. I wonder if I have a really pale, let me see if I have a pale, pale yellow. I might. This one might work. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks, Dot. Can I work? These darn. No. These are the worst markers. Don't get them. Um, we'll stick with the, could always paint over. Yeah. 
very lightly. They are taking a bit of the color of the Um, I think we can see we like I'm gonna put a couple in here. Just like that. And there. I think that needs a little bit more white though in the center. I'm just gonna color that in. See mixed media. If, if there's something that's going to make the whatever I'm doing easier, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's a little bit, see all this is really bright here along that line here. Why not use what you have at home? This one's kind of a little bit on the wonky side. There. or something there. Okay, don't get carried away. <laughs> All right, we'll dry it. <laughs> White colored pencils will work too. Just uh, make sure you have a nice um, fine point on them. I use usually I use uh, pencil, but uh, well, we can spruce up that those leaves a little bit. Let's see, uh, green little. A little bit darker in there. And a little bit of white. Although that, this one won't work because it's dark.
Yeah, see? Doesn't take much. Just play with it a little bit. Yeah. I think that's done. So I didn't put any kind of ink on it. And you don't have to. Sometimes it looks fine the way it is. Um, but if you like ink uh, with your watercolor, then by all means, go ahead and put water or ink on it. Um, but just get those uh, sketchbooks out. Start sketching. You don't have to do the watercolor either. Just sketch. So find something in your kitchen or a drink or a can of pop or a nice glass that you like. Whatever. Fill it with something and then uh, see what you can make out of it. Just the main thing is get drawing. Okay, so that's it for today. And seize the day. To live a creative life, we must lose our fear of being wrong. How true is that? So remember that when you're getting in your sketchbook and don't judge yourself. Just do it for the sake of doing sketching. So I'll let you guys go and you have a great day and we'll see you on Thursday. Um, that'll be June. Wow. So we'll see what we're going to do in June. I'm not sure. If you got some suggestions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you then. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>